Hello, and nice to see you again. Welcome to our painting class, Fingal. Today we're going to look at an artist called Parig McCall. P-A-R-I-G McCall. Absolutely wonderful painter. Beautiful styles and a really nice guy. I met him last year at a fair in the RDS and he talked about using strong colours and strong shapes. Very simple shapes, but strong colour surrounding them. So we're going to have a little look. It wouldn't be termed as a cottage. I think it's more like some sort of a barn or an outhouse. Maybe you keep feed there for cattle there, you know, so that we don't have any doors or windows. So let's have a little look as to how we might approach this. Okay, now we go. That's it, technical. See how technical I am. I'm like that girl, she used to be a chef on RTE years ago. And uh, she used to lick her fingers. When people look back at it now, they say, God, how could somebody do that? But she sort of made it up as she went along. So we're gonna have a little look here, <coughs> excuse me, at a cottage from uh, Porrick McCall. So I might sort of get it in here maybe. Uh, and we go again this is definitely not uh, a structure that's too tight we have it up here now and that's it so we have this here coming down and we have the side going down just a little bit and then our roof is coming across there and again it's been there sort of a long, long time. Um, hasn't been cared for too much with a nice little white coming here. Actually, I think we bring it right out to the edge there. And then we have the side of the building coming down. And down. And I think what we'll do here as well, we'll just bring this across. I think it makes it just a little bit more effective. So. We can change things. It's not a photograph, it's a painting, so we can change things as we're going around. We have one side of the chimney there, we have the side of the cottage, and down here. And we're definitely going to end up with some shadow coming along from here. Okay, so we've got our skyline come here. And this is the old rugged cross. Now, so very, very simple, but hopefully uh, very effective. So we just have a look now as to what color. We're gonna have a nice, nice bright sky. So we'll have a nice, maybe some blue and turquoise and some white, and we'll make up a nice sort of sky there. We want a nice impact against it against the cottage itself. So here we go. And that's the one. Now normally I would use the side of my hand like this to try and get some straight lines in. Maybe I can do it now. Because it's quite awkward trying to get, you know, if you're trying to do this, oh, you're all over the place. So here we'll try and get this in. And I really just want to get some color in here first. I can worry in a few minutes whether it's the right colour. Uh, you may notice that this is not a clean white board. And all the shops shut at the moment. I'm I'm recycling boards. So if you have a board that you've painted on, you're not sort of happy with the way things sort of went with it, and you want to get rid of it and use the board again. I would say to you to get some uh, emulsion. You probably have emulsion at home in one way or another. Bits of paint that you haven't used yet out the back. Just stick it onto it and you've got a new board. It's quite nice to work off to as well, I think. Now, here we go. Yeah, that's the way. I 
Have you been painting at all, I wonder? I just find that my days are just slipping by. You know, I wake up probably eight o'clock, have a coffee. Uh, I'm forced to watch uh, Last of the Summer Wine, which I don't like, but it sort of starts the day off in a harmless sort of way anyway. And uh, I try and get a bit of painting done, and before I know it, before I know it, it's half 12, time for soup and a sandwich, or in today's weather, maybe a bit of salad. And then the day, a little bit of work around the house, and suddenly it's half four in the afternoon. So where are we now? Oh yeah, okay. So that's not too bad. I'm going to uh, wipe off my brush and maybe go for a smaller brush. And I want lots of texture in this, so I'm really gonna get some red and yellow. I'm just trying to make that as sharp as I can, but what you don't want is a flat red on that. You want some nice texture on it. This roof is up there. It's probably red, so I'm gonna go over this again but it probably hasn't been repaired for 20 years. Maybe a corrugated roof and it's gone rusty, which is nice for us because it gives us a nice, a nice color to work on against the greens. Yeah, so I might just leave that for a moment. Uh, maybe just bring it right out to the edge there, that's it. Now, I'll bring it right down here now. Lots of paint. So I think maybe on top of that we'll skim. And I'm not even gonna try and paint too much. I don't wanna pick up that yellow. And I certainly want some of it to shine through. I go for some crimson here as well. Because you're gonna have all sorts of different textures sort of happening. Now that's the one. Oh yeah, I like that. Not a happy accident. Sometimes I get things that I'm not really planning on. Now I need to see that a little bit of white up here. Probably you're gonna have to with your white. Let's put the white on and then go back to it again in a little while and just reinforce it a bit. We don't want blue. There we go. And the cottage there. It's going to come out sort of blue as well. Well, white with some blue shadows now in a few minutes. So initial thing is just get paint on it. And if it turns out that it's very sort of a rough finish, because if you think of these cottages, they were, they weren't sort of plastered by a plasterer guy. Somebody stuck these up sort of 20 years ago. And uh, that's it, nice rough sort of finish on it. Look, that's it. Yeah. Oh, I like that, yeah. Now, wash my brush off again. Try and get a little bit of contrast in. Dum -de -dum -dum. Dum -de -dum -de -dum. Now, we're going to put some really, really dark shadows in, just on the right-hand side, over here. We've got, and um, we're going to try and make that as sharp as we can. Get some nice contrast in. That's it. More paint. That's it. And can I get my arm, arm around that? That's it. Now, if I could have full use of my left hand, I could get that in a little bit better, a little bit sharper. I think a little bit of water is required. Just this is where I cheat as well. Yeah, see, a little bit of water gives me that sharp edge. You, you need that sharp edge there. A bit of cheating could be done if you had a, a marker. And we got some shadow there. Maybe there's a maybe there's a bit of turf in there somewhere. And it just fades off then. Okay, where else have we got? We have here at the other side of the chimney. And it's got to be dark as well. 
That's not nice. I just love those contrasts. Bring that down nice and sharp. That's it. Well, not quite it. We should have something maybe just trucking along, but so narrow. So maybe try and use your brush just like a chisel. And you have here stuff that's happening just on the underneath the chimney there, or underneath the, the eaves. You know, it's got a bit darker there. Uh, that's the one. No, that's not too bad at all. So after this now we need some greens and I'm gonna go for a big brush. You could use a palette knife as well. If you don't have a palette knife, you could go down to your drawer press downstairs and see what you got. Okay, so what are we looking at now? We're looking at, looking at lots of yellow. And uh, we got some turquoise or blue in. More yellow, and to be honest with you, I'm going to put in a big chunk of white as well. And just see what we come up with here. Oh. That's it. Nice sharp edge along there. I think the white's working. And of course I can always go back to it again now in a second. Maybe a bit more, with a bit more blue into it there. Oh, that's the one, but lots of lots of paint. You're looking for that really sharp edge in there. That's it, yeah. Now what I'm going to uh, try and do is bring this across here again. Large chunks of color, but lots of nice strong sort of paint. And let it mix on the, uh, let it mix on the board itself. You know, you don't have to sort of, you don't have to mix it on your plate. It just becomes less interesting. Now, you'd never buy a green like that in a tube. You've got to sort of make it up yourself. What I'm gonna do now as I go down is maybe darken this a little bit. But I think the trick might be to bring it down a little bit further. That's it now. And then I'm gonna work up and then try and blend them. So I'm gonna work up. Yes, this is a dark green. I wasn't too sure. So I'm gonna start at the bottom now this time here. Really dark, really strong sort of greens. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna take the white out of it altogether and just go in with uh, maybe just this very dark green uh, and another green there as well. That's it. Oh, yeah. Now, this hopefully will work for me because both will be wet. It's important that this is wet and this is wet to get that blend in. If you let the top one dry, it's not going to be as effective. So just put that in there. Maybe some other bits of yellow as well, just to sort of break it. That's it now. Now, what I've got now is I'm going to dry my brush off, get rid of any excess paint I have, and uh, see can we sort of blend these in. So that things, we don't want sort of a dark green, dark green, and then suddenly, uh, light green you want to be able to sort of get it that blends in so for those of you who use makeup you know what i mean you know that sort of very tippy tappy sort of look just get it in nice and gentle blend it in so that you don't see the join i think really that's probably the most important thing you don't want sort of dark green dark green and then suddenly light green light green you know i've picked up a bit something else somewhere along the way well, that's not too bad nice just because I am who I am I'm gonna try and do a little something here I'm gonna get some red paint on the brush and I'm flattening both sides out so I can get maybe just like a chisel effect Gently, gently, gently. 
Yeah. Now that cottage is very, very white, so I might just, on the left-hand side over there where it's hitting the blue, I might just sort of dirty it up just, just a little bit. And I'm gonna use some black and white. Gives me that nice gray. Uh, that's it. Gently, gently, gently. If you get your sharp edge then, and as you're pulling your hand away, you just soften it then, and then sort of breaks it up just a bit. So that's it. That's a Porrig McCall. And, uh, go paint, go paint, paint, paint. So we look forward to seeing you at the next class of John's Lockdown Painting. And, uh, been really enjoyable sort of doing it. A bit panicky at times. My son doesn't know where his room is at the moment. He's not allowed. This is now Studio One. So I'm just going to leave you just for the last few minutes now with uh, the view of a Porrick McCall look-alike. Enjoy your painting. <laughs>